In this video, we will learn how to perform enthalpy calorimetry calculations. Now before you decide these calculations are super challenging, let's see what each term means. Enthalpy is a big fancy scientific word for heat or energy, and it's measured in units of joules or calories. Calorimetry is the term used to describe the science of heat measurement. Now let's look a little bit more at how calorimetry works. At the center of a calorimetry calculation is the equation Q equals M times C times delta T. The variables in this equation each represent a measurement. Q stands for heat, or more specifically, quantity of heat. The M stands for the mass of material in grams. Delta T is the change in temperature. To find the change in temperature, you take the final temperature and subtract the initial temperature. Sometimes that gives you a negative number, and that just means that the temperature is going down. The last variable in our equation, C, stands for specific heat capacity of a material. This value tells how well a substance can absorb or release heat, and it's a constant. This means if water is the material, we'll always use 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius for C. Now, we'll solve a problem with this equation. Imagine you have a beaker of water with a mass of 75 grams. You measure the initial temperature of that water and find it to be 22 degrees Celsius. Then, you begin adding heat to the water, which causes the final temperature to rise to 32 degrees Celsius. So the question is, how much heat was added? To figure this out, we must find Q for the water, which equals M of the water times C of the water times delta T of the water, or 75 grams times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times the temperature change, which is 32 degrees minus 22 degrees, or 10 degrees Celsius. So the heat gained by the water is 3,135 and canceling the units reveals that our answer is measured in joules. With proper significant digits, this is 3100 joules. Notice this is a positive number, which means the water gained energy. We will now go over the steps involved in calculating the enthalpy change, or delta H, for a chemical reaction. We always start by writing down the units for delta H. Whenever you calculate the enthalpy change for a reaction, the units will be kilojoules of energy per mole of reactant. Next, you calculate the heat that is gained or lost by the water. In calorimetry, water is almost always used as the receiver or the giver of the heat that is transferred. To calculate the heat gained or lost by the water, we'll use that equation again. Q equals M times C times delta T. And remember, C for water is always 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Next, we find the heat gained or lost by the reaction. The assumption in calorimetry is that whatever heat was lost by the reaction will equal the heat that was gained by the water. In other words, all the heat from the reaction is now in the water. The only difference is that if the reaction loses heat, then the water gains heat. In the next step, we'll convert the grams of reactant into moles of reactant, since we're looking for kilojoules per mole. In the final step, we divide the heat for the reaction from step three by the moles of reactant in step four. This gives us an answer in kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's try one of these problems. When 10 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 200 grams of water, 
the temperature goes from 18.2 degrees Celsius to 31.6 degrees Celsius. Find delta H for the reaction in kilojoules per mole. The reaction being referred to is that when NaOH solid dissolves, forming aqueous sodium ions and aqueous hydroxide ions. And we're looking for delta H. Sometimes it's useful to draw a picture of what's happening, like this one. I have a calorimeter, which is simply an insulated cup with water in it. The mass of the water is 200 grams. A thermometer tells us the initial temperature is 18.2 degrees Celsius. Then we add solid sodium hydroxide to the water, and it dissolves. As it does, it releases heat to the surrounding water, and the temperature rises. The final temperature is 31.6 degrees Celsius, giving us a temperature change equal to 13.4 degrees. Also, remember the specific heat of water is equal to 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Another important measurement I'll put on my diagram is the mass of NaOH, which is 10.0 grams. To solve this, I'm going to use my steps, beginning with step one, to determine the units of my unknown, which are kilojoules per mole. Step two says to calculate the heat gained by the water. This is known as Q and will be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of water times the temperature change of water. When we substitute numbers, we get 200 grams times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times 13.4 degrees Celsius. Make sure you use the mass of water here since we're calculating the heat gained by water. The product of these numbers gives us 11,204 joules. This is the amount of heat that's gained by the water. Since our answer has heat in kilojoules, I'll go ahead and convert that now. Step three is to determine the heat lost by the reaction, which equals the heat gained by the water, but it will have the opposite sign. So the heat for the reaction is equal to negative 11.204 kilojoules. Step four is to convert the grams of reactant to moles. So I'll write 10 grams of NaOH over one and put in the molar mass next to it. The grams cancel and we get 0 0.250 moles of NaOH. All right, the last step is to combine the kilojoules of heat and moles of reactant. This means minus 11.204 kilojoules divided by 0 0.250 moles, which gives negative 44.816 kilojoules per mole. Round to the correct number of significant figures, and we get minus 44.8. These problems can seem challenging at first, but with some practice, I hope you get good at these calculations. Good luck with your enthalpy calorimetry.